I'm not sure if it is on yet. Um, we have a little We're bit live. of We are live? Okay. All okay. right. Go ahead, Chuber. Okay. Uh, well, welcome, uh, Hanover Park businesses. This is our town hall meeting with Cook County Assessor Fitzkegi. Um, thank you for joining us. This is, uh, we are hoping for a great conversation. Uh, the assessor agreed to uh, come and meet with all of our Cook County businesses in Hanover Park. Uh, we've done this before, we've, we've had our town halls. Um, those of you who are able to join us live, uh, welcome. If you are not able to, the meeting is being recorded and will be on the Village's YouTube channel as well. Uh, before we uh, proceed any further, I would like to introduce our mayor, Mayor Craig. Well, good afternoon and uh, County Commissioner, uh, County <laughs> Assessor, let me get the right department, huh? The uh, Fred Fritz Kegi. It's been a while since we were together with Fred Crespo up in uh, mm -hmm. off in the States. Yeah, I remember. Good, good friends. Um, the Village Board and our staff have heard some concerns from many of our Cook County uh, property owners, but we want to make uh, sure everybody understands how the system works. I know you've been uh, quite active in providing leadership uh, with the county in uh, the 2019 tax bills. It probably uh, people wonder what is going on and, uh, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, partially understand what's going on, certainly not at your level. And I do uh, appreciate that from uh, our community uh, development and economic uh, what we, the economics of our community, half in Cook and half in DuPage. So I know you're sensitive to all that. So I wanna thank you for your time coming on. Well, happy to be on here, Mayor Craig. Uh, thanks, Director Shubra and uh, the rest of your team, Jed. And um, one of the members of your team goes to church with me here in Oak Park and we, I see him a lot. So oh, really yeah, happy. Fine young man. <laughs> really happy to be um, here with you. I have. Before I get into our presentation, and, and uh, Mayor Craig, I'm really glad that you mentioned that uh, people are mystified by the system, uh, which is totally understandable. I know people who've been uh, immersed in real estate and tax policy making for most of their careers, and they have a shaky understanding of a lot of this. I mean, this is the um, uh, what we've inherited, a very difficult to understand complex system. Um, so what we have here is we'll we'll give you some slides on how the system works. We're only a part of that. I think an important thing to remember is we don't raise the revenue. We don't raise the taxes. Uh, we use assessments to divide up taxes that are determined by our taxing bodies amongst all of us. And so that's why it's important to get an accurate valuation so that you're only paying your, your fair share. Before we get into uh, the slides, and then uh, in the slides will have not only how our system works, but what um, the basic assumptions that went into our commercial valuations in Hanover Park when we reassessed it last year. Um, we'll show you those numbers and you can see how that compares with um, the reality that you live in. Um, and, but before I do that, I just wanted to briefly introduce myself and then um, our Chief Valuations Officer, Don Meyer, who's with us on, on the phone today. Um, We've been in elected office about a year and a half. We came into office in December of 2018 with a commitment to transparency, fairness, and ethics in everything that we do. So that means showing our numbers, making good use of data, not exhibiting favoritism in the process, um, and doing it all transparently and making sure that we, uh, in everything that we do, that we uh, do it fairly for everyone, for that average person who's not um, an insider uh, working the system. Um, with me, uh, we have Don Meyer, who has a, who's been in the real estate lending since the 1970s in the Chicago area, and he used to run a lending for Byline Bank. He's been really helpful in the process of us figuring out what the impact of COVID-19 is on assessments in the economy, because he's seen many more cycles than I have. Don, do you want to just comment briefly before we go into the slides and then Q&A? Sure. Hi, I'm, I'm Don Meyer. Uh, thank you for including us today. And uh, to to Fritz's point of uh, the the system might seem confusing or mystifying. Um, as Fritz said, I was I've been a real estate lender in Chicago and Cook County 
since the early 1970s. I joined the office when Fritz said, uh, w- w- was elected. And, and frankly, after 40 plus years as a real estate lender in this town, I didn't really understand the system. And a big part of what we're trying to do is just uh, help people understand exactly what we're doing and, and how uh, to uh, how we try to come up with values and how we can uh, help you understand what we're doing. Thank you. Yep, and, and my background is a good compliment to Don. So Don was a lender looking at uh, private businesses largely. And my background comes from the capital markets. So there's a trillion dollar real estate market that trades publicly. And my background was uh, investing in many companies like those. I manage the Acorn Fund. I'm a charter financial analyst, uh, MBA from Stanford. And we use insights from public markets to help us see what the impact of COVID-19 is on businesses and what the market is saying about that. So let's get right into the slides here. Um, first of all, I think uh, let's sort of take the uh, 25,000 foot view here. And I think the key insight in this slide, uh, if we go back to the previous slide, um, the key insight here is that uh, at the assessor's office, what we're doing is the right hand side of the equation here. So we're uh, estimating the market value of every property in the county. And it needs to be done accurate. We don't want to have systematic inaccuracies or favoritism in one area because it comes at the expense of everyone else because of what's on the left hand side. So where do your taxes come from? Uh, all the different taxing bodies in your community, the schools, your municipality, um, like Mayor Craig, and, and then the county and, and uh, the, the water board and um, other taxing entities, they all have levies for their budgets and that determines how much money need, that needs to be raised. Um, assessments don't change that. They don't influence uh, whether that number increases or not. It's about $15 billion in total in Cook County. We divide up those levies amongst ourselves by the assessed values. And um, uh, I, an important thing to know is that of, that of those levies on the left-hand side, about two thirds are for schools. So that's how your schools are, are paid for. Um, and uh, I'm not sure what the mix is in Hanover Park, but I'd guess that it's, it's probably in the vicinity of two thirds. And the place where I live in Oak Park, it's actually a little bit bigger, 70%. In the city of Chicago, it's actually a little bit smaller, uh, about 60%. Um, and then uh, what you do is you take the levies and you just uh, on in the numerator and you take the assessed values in the denominator and then that gives you the rate down at the bottom. And the Cook County clerk is about to publish the rate. And then our, our county treasurer sends out the bills and um, they have just started to post those now and you'll be getting them in the mail uh, shortly. And we can go to the next slide. So um, the equalized assessed value that you have in your, prop, in your property is, a, is uh, uh, basically what it does is it, uh, is multiplied by the rate. And the rate, again, is a function of that levy spread across all of the assessed values in your community, that's the base. Um, and that, that's how you get your bill. So it's important to know what your equalized assessed value is coming from, which is basically the key driver there is what is our estimate of the market value of your property? We can go to the next slide. Um, so uh, just as a final reminder, we have the, the values that we're calculating on at the assessor's office. And then there's a second filter on that. If you don't agree with our calculation of the assessed value of your property, um, you can appeal to our office um, to say, hey, you know, actually the rent that we have on our property is this and not this. And um, you have our characteristics wrong or, or um, the cap rate that applies to our property is different. So that's what can go into your appeal to us. If you still think the answer is incorrect or you're not being treated fairly, you can appeal to the Cook County Board of Review um, and then it adjusts its assessed values. They have completed their process for um, the North suburbs and submitted those to um, the county clerk. And that has resulted in the bill that um, is being sent out now. And that's how you get to 
the bill at the bottom, which is sent to you by the treasurer. Um, so just a reminder that we calculate the assessments based on market values, but your actual taxes are determined by those tax accounts. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Um, uh, here again, this is sort of reinforcing what, uh, what I just mentioned. I think you guys get the drift. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Let's look at Hanover Park. And what I've done is I've focused on properties that are rent earning properties. So they're defined as commercial um, in uh, the rubric of, uh, of what we do. We have, most of the properties that we assess are single family homes. Um, that's, we, we assess 1.8 million properties at our office. 1.5 of them are single family homes and condos. And the rest are commercial and industrial. And within commercial, we include a multifamily apartments over six units. And there are 46 parcels like that um, in Hanover Park, uh, in Hanover Township, I'm sorry. Um, and then uh, offices, we have 69 parcels, commercial retail, 360 parcel, parcels, and then industrial, which includes a warehouse space and self-storage uh, at 164. Uh, um, may I uh, jump in here, Fritz? I know you just mentioned, but just for clarification again, that the numbers that you just mentioned are for Hanover Township. Yes. And this is well beyond the geographic limits, the corporate limits of the village of right. Hanover Park. I'm, I'm, we only have yes. uh, maybe two or three industrial parcels in okay. uh, the Hanover Township portion of okay. the county. Okay, that, that really helps me, Shubra. I just wanted to give you, this is from our presentation uh, on Hanover Park. So sure. uh, just want to give people the lay of the land there. Um, now we can go, oh, that's, actually let's go back to the slide there. I just wanted to summarize just some, some observations from Hanover Park. So um, you can see what's going on in terms of uh, construction activity. Um, so, you know, this industrial comment here doesn't apply to you, but um, uh, you know, that looks like the activity in terms of new construction has been um, subdued, but I know you're revitalizing the commercial area and let's look into the drivers of how we uh, did our assessments for commercial properties. Um, here, the, when you calculate the value of a commercial property, the very important starting point is the top line. What kind of rental income does the property generate? Um, and here are the assumptions that we used. So for apartments, 674 median rent per unit. For offices, we used uh, 1483 per square foot. For commercial and retail, we used 1443 per, first, per square foot. For restaurant spaces, um, 1955 per square foot. These are typically single space rentals. Um, and then uh, industrial 720 per square foot. And here are the vacancy rates that we use. So we, what we do is we look at how much top line income can be generated from rent. And then we apply a vacancy factor to that rental income. Where do we get this information? Uh, we get it from uh, many different sources. If you guys have ever been in the market for space, you would use the same sources that we do. So we start with CoStar, which is sort of the big Gorilla, when it comes to commercial uh, rent information, uh, they own a lot of websites like apartments.com and others that have that information. They have lots of information about vacancy, uh, rents, um, occupancy, and the kinds of tenants that are there. Um, and you can see the other assumptions we made here. We also use other data sources like uh, talking to brokers, uh, talking, we use a database called TREP, any mortgage that's in a mortgage-backed security reports its income and expense and um, appraisal to the public market, to the SEC, and we use that information. So we try to get the best data we can. Sometimes it's more applicable to the property that you own, sometimes it's less. And it's really important that um, we know the characteristics that apply to your property, because we it's 100% sure that you know more about your property than we do, um, because we are assessing, we're 250 people assessing uh, 1.8 million properties, several hundred thousand commercial properties. And um, we have to take a mass approach with these kinds of assumptions, but you can help us by showing us when that information uh, is different. So we can go to the next slide here. 
So the next part of, um, uh, of valuing any commercial property is after you've looked at the rent and occupancy and the expenses that relate to it, then you look at what multiple of the operating income that the building earns does the market put on that annual income. And so here you can see the cap rates that we use. This, the market calls these a cap rate. Um, and off on the right-hand side, you can see which cap rates we're using for, for Hanover Township. So for apartments, we're using 6% and change, offices 7.5, commercial retail 7.5, restaurant 7.5, industrial 9. And again, where do we get these uh, cap rates from? We get them from all those sources that we, that we just talked about. Plus, we look at, we talk to brokers, we look at actual transactions that happen see what kind of income those buildings have, and we can see what cap rates um, the, markets, uh, the market is paying for them. Um, another important note is that we, will, we, we have median cap rates here on the right-hand side, but depending on the quality and size of the building, um, we will uh, shift that up or down. If it's a lower quality building, if it's a smaller building, we'll tend to use a higher uh, cap rate to reflect the fact that the market would contribute a more value. Um, and then we'll, I'll show you more detail about the cap rates that we used for different kinds of properties in the following slides. So, but first let's look at how that shook out for Hanover Township overall. Um, what you can see here is for the 2019 assessment, you can see uh, we estimate uh, for the 46 apartments in the township Median annual net operating income of 69,000 using a cap rate of six and change, resulting in a median assessed value of 113,000. And then you can see down the line for offices and commercial. I think for commercial retail, this is the most relevant for the group here. Um, you can see the, uh, the cap rate and the median net operating income for the property that we use, um, and then the resulting median assessed value. So 100. And just a little bit less than $200,000 of assessed value for commercial property, average commercial property in, um, in Hanover Township. Um, and you can see that I think it's important to note overall uh, industrial commercial uh, down at the bottom assessed value changed by about 33% from um, the previous assessed value to the assessed value in 2019. What drove that change? I think you'd see some increase in rents, but mostly that would be a change in the market's multiple that it's paying, the cap rate. Um, and uh, with bond, with interest rates being low and uh, real estate being an attractive asset class versus bonds, that's why uh, the cap rate was lower than it was in the, the past. We this is what I'd also like to notice. This increase is much smaller than we saw in many other more suburban. Um, townships. Okay, we can go to the next slide. So just to break down more specifically, what were the assumptions that we use for different kinds of commercial property? Um, look here for, for whatever the businesses are listening in on the call here, you should see, you know, how did the assumption that, that we used here compare with the reality that you have um, in terms of uh, uh, rent, um, and you know, here are the vacancy assumptions that were built into that. Um, so in some of these cases, you can see we're using a lot of vacancy for the motels, 32%, uh, for nursing homes, 10, pretty high for office at 15, pretty high for the shopping centers at 12. Um, and that's as of January 1st of 2019. We can go to the next slide. Uh, do we want to talk about Schaumburg Township here, or uh, is this not relevant for folks from Hanover Park? We do have a small portion of uh, Hanover Park in the Schaumburg Township, uh, okay. close to our northeastern edge of the town, uh, okay. but not too many commercial properties in there, a few. Okay, well, a let's few. just briefly look at the assumptions that went into Schaumburg on the next slide. You can see the rent assumptions that we use for apartments, office years, commercial. Uh, so $12.60 $12 per square foot. Uh, little vacancy, vacancy rate of 6%. Uh, 
on the restaurants at 1955. I think that was the same that we used for, for Hanover Township. Again, the same kinds of sources. Then we can go to the next slide. Um, here are the cap rates that we used. So for commercial um, and restaurants, 7% and restaurants 7.5. So a little lower than for Hanover Township. Um, that's based on what we see the market multiples being based on the data that we have, the transactions that we saw. Um, and here you can see how that shook out in terms of median assessed value. So median assessed value in commercial on uh, Schaumburg, uh, 530,000 and change. Um, so significantly higher median assessed value than in Hanover Township. Um, and you can see that the commercial and, and uh, industrial assessed value grew more in Schaumburg than it did in Hanover Park by a pretty significant margin. Um, and again, cap rates would be the biggest driver of that change. And that's, again, based on transactions that we see and based on all the sources that we gave you. Here are the different assumptions that go into the different business lines. Um, so you can see motel occupancy uh, higher in uh, Schaumburg than in uh, than in Hanover Township by a decent margin. Uh, shopping centers have a little bit more vacancy than in Hanover Township based on the data that we have. Um, you can see retail strip vacancy of seven, and you can see the rent uh, the rents that we use there um, not too different from Hanover Township. Um, one before we. Uh, build on this discussion, get to Q&A. First of all, here's contact information for our team uh, where you can reach out to us if you have any questions uh, that aren't covered in this call. Um, I'd like to talk about what we're seeing with COVID-19. Um, so we started, we're reassessing the south part of the county this year. Um, and we were just starting to send out townships in February uh, when COVID-19 hit. Um, and we saw um, several things that we knew would be devastating for uh, commercial businesses and for homeowners and basically for all classes of retail property. First of all, epic unemployment, uh, record breaking. Uh, we've never had a, uh, an acceleration of unemployment like we saw, and it's never been this high since uh, the Great Depression. That affects uh, People's buying power that affects spending, uh, especially in in uh, many different kinds of retail businesses. Um, so that's that's one big factor right there. We saw public markets, so the real estate investment trust that I mentioned at the start, which is a trillion dollar market, um, and one that I'm I'm very familiar with. We saw public markets sort of saying that the impact of COVID nineteen was quite significant for retail for lodging. Um, for entertainment, theater spaces, um, quite large impact. So we saw smaller impacts on other different kinds of commercial property, um, uh, offices, for example. Um, and we and what we did is we said, like, and then when the the state declared a disaster area, um, and then it was a, there was a federal declaration of a disaster area in the state under the Illinois Property Tax Code. Uh, where we can take account of that, um, as well as under other parts of the code where uh, we can change our assessments as are just based on conditions. And we said, we need to take this into account. Um, so what we are doing now, uh, what we've done already is in the south part of the county, we've shown where what we think the COVID-19 impact is on different classes of real estate. And we, will, we are right now working on uh, making adjustments to um, Chicago and the North Triad, where uh, Hanover Township is, to see uh, you know, what the, the COVID-19 impact would be on, on different classes of real estate. And we'll make an adjustment if it's warranted. Um, the key thing to note is that it's not a full reassessment of Chicago and the North Triad uh, because we're working under time compression here. We are the first assessment district in the United States to take on this work. We have other states following our lead now. Uh, Washington State is trying to get their 
uh, tax code change in the, so that they can do the same things that we're doing to, to, to really take into account COVID-19 immediately so that our assessed values aren't stale. Um, I've talked a lot here. I wanted to let Don uh, Meyer speak and then we can get to questions. I know you'll have a lot of them. So, uh, th 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 thank you, Fritz. Um, in, in terms of the COVID-19 adjustments, uh, what we really tried to do is um, incorporate the, the changes uh, that impact value uh, into a, uh, a single measure through the capitalization rate. So we, we know that for a number of properties, uh, the rents that someone's able to charge is changing. Um, uh, a number of tenants aren't, uh, aren't reopening. So there'll be uh, different vacancy levels and higher expense levels. Um, but we're, we're trying to reflect all of those changes uh, singularly into a change cap rate, which uh, as Fritz has talked about with regard to um, uh, the real estate investment trust market, uh, the, the the way that it's, uh, is expressed in, in the stock market is just the uh, price earnings multiple. And uh, uh, so the historical earnings are the same, but values went down, which just meant that the price earnings multiple went down. Uh, and the way we've reflected that is in the same way uh, the cap rate has, has increased. And the cap rate and the price earnings multiple, frankly, one way to think about them is one is just the inverse of the other. Um, uh, Fritz, are those the issues that uh, you, uh, you want me to go into anything else? Can I, I jump in and I ask a quick question related to the cap rates? Sure. So what we've heard from a lot of our commercial brokers is that uh, specifically in Hanover Park, we're um, expecting higher cap rates. Um, is it possible that you view different jurisdictions or different areas with different cap rates or is the same applied all over the county? Because Schaumburg might perform differently from Hanover Park, as you saw in some of the um, tables that you were presenting. Is it possible to use a different cap rate? Don, you want to address that? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, in, in fact, we, we do try to look to the market for what is the appropriate rate for each each community, frankly, for each location. Uh, and we also try to distinguish the cap, what's the appropriate cap rate by, by class of property. So um, the way I think uh, most institutional real estate people, they uh, uh, look at real estate, what the uh, the commercial brokers would probably tell you uh, would be very similar. We try to break down properties into what we call institutional properties. Those would be properties that would be uh, attractive investment opportunities for international and national uh, real estate investors. Uh, we look. Uh, we then also look at what we call regional properties. Uh, regional properties would, would typically be the focus of investment by national players or, or regional players. And then finally, neighborhood properties are, are typically purchased only by uh, uh, people in the local community. And historically uh, and pretty consistently, the lowest cap rate is applied to institutional properties with a slightly higher cap rate for regional properties, and again, a slightly higher cap, cap rate than regional properties for neighborhood properties. So, so we do try and spend a lot of time uh, trying to make sure that we've got the right cap rate uh, for, for the uh, specific type of property. And yeah, we would, we would spend a lot of time trying to uh, distinguish, um, if you will, properties in Hanover Park and how they might uh, be different in Schaumburg. And, and just to build on what Don mentioned, uh, we recognize that that uh, 
in the market. There are very different markets for bigger institutional properties than there are for, for neighborhood properties. And typically the neighborhood properties uh, aren't as profitable. They're not professionally managed. They might not be as new and spiffy um, and uh, a harder collection experience. Uh, you know, the tenants are, are in a weaker position. Um, and so the market puts a lower multiple on them. And we, we work really hard to try to make sure that we have good data that's reflecting what's going on in all those different tiers. Our data, the third party data that's out there tends to skew to the bigger properties. So uh, we, we created a commercial uh, a property portal, real property income and expense portal this year. So people could submit their information to us before the assessment process starts. Um, so that we can get that full view into, um, I'm sorry, the smaller properties, um, so that we can see the difference in profitability, and then work our way into, um, you know, how much lower is the multiple that someone would pay for a neighborhood property than for regional property? And we, we, this is why we require when people file an appeal with us that they also fill out that form, so we can build our data and see that difference and be, have a more granular treatment for the smaller properties versus the bigger ones. Okay. Uh, thank you. I think that's one of the major questions that we get from most of our uh, businesses, specifically along Irwin Park Road. Uh, these are the smaller businesses, mom mm -hmm. and pop stores, um, uh, very few corporate owned um, and uh, each of them has been coming back inquiring why their taxes went up. Um, and when they look at the cap rates, uh, uh, the feedback that we get from our uh, commercial brokers uh, is that we shouldn't be expecting, we should be expecting more like a nine or 10 cap rate rather than a you know, seven or eight. Uh, but that's something that we can discuss uh, well, uh, in terms of the appeals process then. This is really helpful. And we, um, as I mentioned at the start, we value lots of different properties and we, uh, we change, you know, we change our judgment when we get more data and we can mm -hmm. make that decision. And that, the asset test is, what do these things trade for in the market? And then we can work our way back into um, the cap rates based on, you know, what we know the incomes are. And we, we, when, when folks give us the evidence to say, hey, look, you've, you, you, you misfired on the cap rate here. Uh, we recognize that, we, we own that, we wanna see that. We've actually, we changed our rules this year to make sure that we're open to all that information and that we're not dismissing it for, for minor technical reasons. Um, and uh, uh, we, we, this is why we created that real property income and expense form too. That's, that's good to hear. This is the mayor again. Um, Listening to this, one of the concerns that I've heard from a uh, shopping center owner was the properties along uh, Barrington Road um, were different from the, you know, the behind the up front, you know, the, the line of uh, businesses along the back. So there was uh, some consternation about, boy, why, why am I paying at the, uh, Taco Bell, seventy-five thousand in in the back behind him, you know mm -hmm. the strip mall kind of a situation was so much less. Well, and, that's uh, a really good point, Mr. Mayor, and um, uh, we never want to mix fish with fowl like that. And <laughs> yeah, um, the more that we can uh, get the data, so one of the ways that we look to to see did we miss fire in that we look at like if you have two different locations that are nearby each other, but there's a big difference in desirability should be a difference in rent. Um, so if, if the rental in one place is different from what we've assumed and what we see elsewhere, that's a pretty good indicator that, hey, here's a less uh, desirable space that, that, that might call for different treatment. Sure, thank you. Would this be a good segue into the appeals process then? So if, if a commercial property owner does have uh, concerns about uh, the assessment, what what is the, the his next step? What are his choices? How does he approach your office, and what does he need to do for the process? Sure, Don, uh, you supervise this. You want to um, speak to that? Sure. Um, there, there 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 are a number of things you can do. 
uh, the, uh, the the traditional way is to uh, file an appeal. Um, the um, what what we're really looking for in the appeal is specific information about your property. Uh, what are the rents? What are the expenses? What if you have information on similar properties in a similar location that have sold so that we can get the insight into the cap rate uh, that that property sold for, we can, we can use that data to uh, uh, I- include in your valuation. There's, I think, some confusion that, that we require an appraisal. Uh, in, in fact, we do not require an appraisal. Um, what we, what is most helpful is information that you have about your property. Um, the the other thing that we uh, instituted late last year was uh, uh, we established a, an opportunity to meet with assessor leadership, uh, which is is typically myself as the uh, head of evaluations and and one of our attorneys. And we're available to to meet with uh, property owners um, on a basis, and you can you can request meeting through our website uh, on uh, we set it up for Thursday mornings. Um, we were having meetings prior to COVID nineteen. Uh, people stopped requesting requesting the meetings, but. Uh, but we continue to be open to uh, to discuss general issues on that Thursday morning meeting. And and, and building on what Don said about uh, the appraisals, don't have to bring an appraisal. Uh, second of all, um, you don't have to hire a lawyer uh, because the, the appeal is based on the data that you're bringing um, and how that changes the, the valuation um, decision that, that we came to. You're welcome to hire a lawyer, an important thing to know is that um, our analysts don't see the identity of the lawyer uh, under our new rules, it's anonymized. Um, and so the decisions are made based on uh, the data uh, at hand. And um, further, if, the... if, if, if you still, and if, if uh, folks um, still feel our, our, an appeal um, didn't render the right decision and uh, we, you know, there, there's such a multiplicity of cases. There are always going to be situations where, uh, we, where we don't get it quite right, where we don't have all the data. Um, there are other avenues of appeal. You have um, board review uh, at Cook County. You have the Property Tax Appeals Board of the State of Illinois, and you have a fourth venue, which is the court system. Um, and um, so there, there are four different opportunities to uh, appeal that initial assessment. Before I ask you a question, I would like to let our attendees know that if you had a question, you can please type it in, type it in into the Q and A portion. Uh, typically, it would be at the bottom of your screen. It'll have it'll say Q and A. Please send us your questions uh, through the Q and A chat. Uh, I just received one that the second installment bill is now available, and uh, their commercial building has all net leases but when they build the tenant for their share in the middle of a pandemic, many ten- tenants may be forced to close. Um, and why is Cook County increasing taxes for the small businesses in the middle of a pandemic? This question um, just came in through the chat. That's, that's a very fair question. Uh, remember that um, the, what we do is we don't set the taxes. So remember it's all your uh, local taxing bodies that set the amount of dollars that they need to raise. And the amount of dollars that they need to raise was determined last fall, mostly. Um, and uh, it was largely determined before COVID-19. Um, and that, that's the levy, you remember from the presentation, that's the thing up in the numerator um, that spread across the assessments, which we calculate here. So what we're doing is we're taking data from the market. We're looking at the market and we're saying, what's the market paying for these properties? And that's, that's our job. That's the job of uh, the team that Don has, but our team doesn't set the taxes. We don't, um, uh, we, we don't have any involvement with them. And that the state uh, for a bunch of reasons 
separates what we do from um, the amount of taxes that have to be gathered or collected. And, and I think it's a good opportunity that um, we should all be uh, closely watching our taxing bodies to make sure that they know the value of a dollar. I know that Mayor Craig is really good at that. And I know other, others on the phone here. Um, if you're a citizen and you wanna monitor those taxing bodies to see what they're doing with property taxes, uh, the first place to look is your local school district because that's two thirds of your levy. Um, and they're the ones that are really driving the bus on um, the amount of taxes raised. And you can ask good questions saying, you know, how big are your reserves? Um, we have a rainy, you know, this, if there was ever a time to use a rainy day fund, it's in the middle of a pandemic, right? Um, and so I think we all need to uh, really uh, 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 tell our taxing bodies as we go into the property tax cycle for the next year that um, they're holding the line on those levies um, because it is it's very hard. We know what, how hard it is on, uh, especially on small businesses that depend on foot traffic, uh, small business, small uh, property owners that, that have tenants that are uh, really uh, feeling the cataclysm of the of the pandemic, and and just a reminder that we are, uh, you know, we're first in the nation and really taking account of okay, what's happening to property values because of COVID nineteen. So we're doing all that we can on our part of the equation to get that right. Is there a place where uh, a property owner could go uh, to find a checklist um, or some guidance uh, that you just mentioned in about the processes? Uh, where would they go to find that? Um, and in terms of steps, the first step, what I heard was to appeal to your office mm -hmm. and then appeal to the Board of Appeals. Uh, sure. Does your website have all of that information? Yes, uh, we have completely souped up and revamped our, our website and, and that came into force in, uh, in February and not a moment too soon because of COVID-19. So folks can go to cookcountyassessor.com and there's, uh, there's a ton of information there on how to appeal. Uh, we, we instigated, uh, we, we put into place uh, online appeals um, this year for, for single family homes. Um, and there, you can submit materials for your appeals for commercial properties on, online as well. Um, uh, actually folks who are appealing have to use uh, the online forms now. Uh, we have, we walk people through uh, all the different processes and, and things that they can use uh, to avail themselves of that process. We have our deadline calendar for the, when the appeals window opens uh, published there. We have our real property income and expense form published there so that people can get ahead of this. Now, as I mentioned, one of the biggest sources of error and problems for us is, doesn't it make sense for us to have the data before we make the assessment rather than later? Um, so that we can get it right the first time before we send that assessment out, before you have to worry about uh, legal fees and other things that might be involved as part of the appeals process. If you can get it to us earlier, use that real property income and expense form and submit data, uh, we'll, we'll do a better job on our um, assessment. So we have all that information and more. We have, in the, I showed you some slides from our and over Township presentation, you can get all the nitty gritty about um, the things that we used in Hanover Township in um, Schaumburg Township online. Our, the assessor's office never published this before our administration, but we, we wanna show people how we get to our numbers um, there. Um, and then all the other rules for appeals are also published. That was something else that our office never published before. Um, but you know, we're trying to make this more navigable for the the average person and uh, we'll continue to make improvements on that too. We will also post this uh, PowerPoint on the Villages website for those of our businesses who would like to get this information, the information that was presented today, we will definitely be posting that online as well. Um, uh, is there a phone number uh, Fitz, that people can call? Um, um, yes, we put the information right here on the slide, so 312-443-7550. Um, we hope people will be patient in, um, in using the phone during a pandemic. You know, we've tried real hard to keep our employees <laughs> safe 
Um, and so really the best thing to do is to correspond with us by email or, uh, or social media. You'll get a faster response um, and um, um, probably one that's more convenient for you too. Um, we, you know, we are building our call center so that people can take our, our taxpayer response team can uh, take calls at home, but we, we encourage you to use the email and, and online resources, which are all right here. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, I do have another question that came in and this uh, does uh, pertain to the cap rates that we were talking about. Uh, this is from a broker. Uh, the retail cap rates at 7.33 seem very low from what we are seeing selling in the market. The retail centers in general, even though uh, those with the uh, national anchors have greatly decreased in value, especially as more and more retailers close, particularly with online shopping. Can you explain how you are adjusting for this problem in retail currently? Uh, what, uh, Don, you want to talk about this? Because uh, this actually speaks to COVID-19 too. Well, uh, absolutely. So, um, the, the we are um, looking very closely at what, like what's happening in retail. We're very aware of the issues. We're also uh, uh, very aware that a number of retailers closed, and uh, and and many of them will not be reopening as as the state and the county reopen for business. Uh, in terms of um, Hanover Township, uh, I think one of the important things to remember is, is that um, the, the, the cap rates that you're looking at there would, would have been for the time frame from January 1, 2019. Uh, because that's that's when we did that assessment. So what we're doing this year in 2020 is looking at the appeals as they uh, come in uh, for commercial properties in the city of Chicago and in the northern uh, uh, tri-county uh, and, and reviewing those appeals with current values compared to the previous assessed values from last year in, in the Northern Tri or 2018 in the city. And, and we will then be making adjustments on, uh, as, as appropriate for, for commercial values based on, on the appeals and applying those to, to the classifications of properties uh, um, as, uh, as appropriate. And, and just building on what Don mentioned, uh, you know, so we will look at that information as they're coming in appeals, and then we will make a reduction for everyone, whether they've appealed or not, um, uh, because we're trying to get uh, on top of what's happened with COVID-19 to the market. Um, I just add that uh, if just with our, our, our broker friend here, be interested to hear what they thought. But, um, you know, when we just look at what's happened with public markets for retail properties, you know, the impact has probably been more than 100 basis points um, uh, all in on, on uh, the combined income and cap rate effect um, to these properties. So it's significant. Hmm. There's one more question that has come in, and this is from another business um, in Hanover Park. It's a independently owned business, um, not retail. It's more of a service business. Uh, and uh, he says, uh, my property taxes went up from 40,000 since I purchased in 2017. I don't understand it and I can't afford it. I'm going to be forced to close my business and sell my property. My taxes were 51,000 and now have been raised to 91,000. That seems <laughs> very uh, high. Um, any, uh, it does. Uh, I'm sure uh, you need to look at the specifics. Uh, but I, I, think, I think, first of all, we need, you'd want to look at, um, from our end, what we'd want to see is what, what was the estimated assessed value of your property? Was it assessed correctly or not? Um, and um, if it wasn't, then you know, we'd want to get that right. 
I think the other thing that I don't know that I, the dynamics of what's going on with your taxing bodies um, in your community, but see what happened with the mm -hmm. levies. How much did the levies increase um, in the community that you're in? Again, we don't, we don't control that. We're just trying to estimate the value of the properties. And it's always possible that we get that wrong. So um, you should uh, see, did we estimate the, the market value of your, your property correctly? And that's something that we can fix. What we can't fix is it's the levies that come from the taxing bodies in your community. We know lots of different communities have had um, the levies go up quite significantly. The community I live in, that's true. Um, in Chicago, it's definitely true. Um, uh, and this is where we, we, we all as, as members of our community need to close, keep a close eye on taxing bodies to make sure that they know the value of the dollar. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a tough question. Man. I'm sure somebody got in touch with your office, Vince. <laughs> Pardon? I'm sure. Yeah, somebody, if, you know, yeah, well, it, it, look, uh, when we get assessments wrong, they do get in touch with us and they should. Yeah, no kidding. Um, but uh, that's not necessarily the case here. Um, so we, but we certainly want to know uh, did we get that assessment right? Very good. Well, I think uh, I think we're about to wind it up, are we not, Shubra? Fritz, I'd like to thank you oh, yeah, and, your, mute. Yeah. and your and your office. I think your time is uh, extremely valuable to spend with uh, a few of us here in Hanover Park. Um, I know that uh, we all learn as we go, and uh, I'd like to uh, thank you personally, and uh, I'd, I'd like. I like getting together, you know, where we all get our arms around each other and eyeball to eyeball. Uh, it, it's really difficult to try to convey our, um, you know, our feelings and our sense of goodwill through this electronic me medium. Uh, but I think you did a fine job. So I really appreciate uh, your time and energy. And Shubra, a final thought from you? Thank you so much, uh, Assessor's Office, for... Uh, joining in. I understand that this was probably the first of its kind for commercial properties. You've done some of these for residential, so um, happy to uh, uh, be part of this pioneer uh, uh, action from your office. Uh, and businesses that are listening, business owners, uh, property owners, please contact us. Please let uh, the assessor's office know. If you have any questions, we will definitely be putting this PowerPoint online. Um, and uh, if we can uh, uh, put together some sort of a, a Q&A or FAQs, we will do that as well. Once again, thank you so much, uh, Assessor Fritz, uh, Kagi, um, and Don. Uh, thank you, Mayor, for joining us. And I appreciate all the property owners who are listening in. Um, hopefully many more will be able to uh, get additional information when we post this information online. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. everybody. And we, we hope you'll, uh, you'll take advantage of all the resources that we put online. Please uh, do let us know if we're, we've got those numbers wrong and help us get the data so we can uh, do a better and better job for you, the people that we serve. So thanks everyone, Mayor Craig, uh, Director Shubra, Jed and everyone else on the team. We appreciate the opportunity and we'll be happy to be back. Thank you. Have Thank a great you. day. Okay.